Hello. I haven't done a tutorial in quite a while, so I thought I would try and get back into them, but start off with something quite simple. So I'm going to do an interior, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in future videos, use the interior that I've made here to do some sort of slightly less simple stuff, uh, which would require an interior to do. So I'll have it all sort of set up. So in order to make an interior, it's really fairly simple. We've got this cell view world space interiors thing, which should be the default. So we just right click um, edit on any cell and then we'll get this big list of all the interiors in the game. And if we just right click anywhere and hit new, this new form editor ID is going to come up. So I'm just going to call this um, tutorial interior like that. And there we have, you'll see we've got it, we're selected on it now. And all this is going to have none written in it. So a lot of this we don't desperately need to set. Music type, this will be the music that plays when we're inside. Most interiors will have um, one of the MUS dungeon uh, things, dungeon A, B or C. And it, do it, it doesn't really matter which one of those you pick, it'll just affect which dungeon music plays. And then lighting, I usually go for the default lighting template because then this will just be a sort of a fairly darkish room and we can then add our own lights later on. Now you might find that this, this template is quite foggy so we'll be kind of you'll be able to see a fog appearing and disappearing as you walk through the room. The best thing to get rid of that is if we uncheck fog far and uncheck fog near that will stop our cell inheriting those properties from uh, the template and we can just go to near zero and far zero and now there won't be any fog showing up in our cell. Really the most important thing we want to set up is any interior data. So the name of our cell, this is how it will appear you know, when the player saves and it tells you where you are or when you come to open a door to go into it. So I'm just going to call it tutorial room and any ownership we can leave or we can add it if we want. So we could set it to be owned by any one individual NPC or we can set it to be owned by any individual faction. And then we can check public, which means you know, if it's owned, we can go in there. Off limits, which means, you know, that's naughty, that's trespassing. And then these owner things are just basically, it's a way to quickly set up who owns everything that's inside it. But I'm just going to leave it all open so the player can uh, go in and take things and store things as they please. Exterior LOD world space. That is, I think, if you want to see stuff outside of the windows, and I've not even attempted to do that, and it always looks horrible when a base game does it. So I'm just going to leave it at interiors and click OK. And I'm just going to save because my creation kit crashes all the time. So now we're going to want to look for our um, cell in the list, which is tutorial interior, named tutorial room. And we're going to double click it. And we want to make absolutely sure it's loaded up so we're not editing some other cell. And you can tell it's loaded up because it now says at the top tutorial interior here. And you can see the list of tutorial interior objects, and there's nothing at all. It's a totally blank cell. So now what we're going to want to do is create our interior by going to the static section. And then we're going to want to decide what we want our interior to look like. So there are several different um, style sets. They all begin with BLD. And we'll see them all come up and along with anything else that happens to have BLD in it. So we could go for BLD, Wood, P which is the one I usually use for my interior buildings. So if we just preview that, you can see it's the ones that look like this. Or we could go for wood uh, B, which looks like this, so there's no wall on it at all. We could go for WLP, which is wallpaper, which look like this. We could go for deco, which look like this. We could go for concrete, which looks like this. We could go for high tech, H I T, and they okay. High tech is a thing, but uh, it's not doesn't use the same naming conventions as the others apparently. But anyway, I'm going to go for B L D wood P. And once you've chosen that, you can see there's a whole lot of different stuff. Like there are some static collections which show up looking like this, so that's whole sections of rooms already completed. Or you can use the individual pieces, which allows for a much more versatile uh, creation of an interior. So I'm just going to do BLD, Wood, P, SM, because you can use SM pieces or BG pieces, which are small and big, 
So big ones, very, very tall like this. The SM pieces are... I did a cut there while I looked for the thing that I wanted. There we go. That's the size of a small wall. So if we use BLD wood P SM wall, we're going to get a whole list of the walls that we can use. So I'm just going to make the small, a very sort of basic interior. So we just click and drag into the render window and you'll see it's appeared here. So I'm holding shift and moving my mouse like this to rotate, zoom in with my uh, mouse wheel, hold space and move the mouse to move up and down. And we can eat, we can put on these snap to angle and snap to grid. Um, I usually like to work with this for when I'm building the walls. So move like that. And now it's on a grid, you see, so it's moving like that rather than moving individually. And we can adjust the sensitivity of our movement by right clicking in the void and clicking render window properties and going to movement. So I have mine very, very low. I have it in 16 and snap to angle 45 is standard. But my movement and rotation speeds I have very, very low for more precise movement when I'm not using uh, the snaps. So basically what we do is we just keep clicking and dragging the components that we want and make sure they align. To help with alignment, if you hit M, markers uh, will show up and you can just about see them at the back there. These little green lines can sometimes be a good guide if you're not sure if you've aligned properly. And so when we're in, when we're moving items around, we can hold X, uh, sorry, Z to move things up and down. If we hold X, we can move things backwards and forwards. And if we hold C, we can move things left to right. So again, that just helps with alignment so we're not doing this and messing everything up like I just did there. So that's going to be, I'm just going to make it as tiny as humanly possible. Okay, I've assembled my walls. So now I'm just going to change my filter from SM wall. I'm just going to put SM FL art. So here we go. We get, we've got these wood P SM floor ceilings. So they, those have both the floor and the ceiling in it. Like that. And I'm going to use those, but you can use floor only and ceiling only. In uh, If you just put, you know, FL, you can see there are some floor onlys here. And if we go CE, we can see the ce ceilings only, but I'm just going to use this. I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate that. And now when I move it out of the way, like that, you can see we've got two. And the advantage of using the C, X, and Z keys is that you don't actually have to have your cursor over the object. So if you're having trouble clicking on something... I can have my cursor up here, hold C, click and drag, and it just moves along the axis. But if I let go of C, I've got my free movement back. So if you're having trouble moving anything, do it like that. And so you'll notice I've left a gap back here, and because this is where I'm going to put my door. So I'm going to put my filter back for wall. Sorry, SM wall. And we want to look for these ones that have skt in them like that. And you can see those have open door frames. And we're going to click and drag. And our door has appeared. Rotate that with my right mouse button. Move it with my left like that. And there's our complete room without a door. And another advantage this uh, these components have over ones in the GEC is because they're individual pieces and not... You know, because in the GEC you would get set pieces so the wall floor and ceiling would all come together. With this, we can kind of have it any size we want, so we could click and drag these so that some parts of it are outside in the void and make our room a lot smaller if we wanted, but this size is fine. So next up, we're going to want to actually create a door. So there are these things called plugs for which we're going to need to use because the door won't actually fit in this frame. So I'm going to click and drag, because we used skicked A here. I'm going to drag in plug A, and we'll see we've got a door frame here with these yellow things to help us align it. So we just click that in, and you can see there that has gone in nicely like that, and it's all sealed up. And so we're going to want to find a suitable door. So we're going to go to door, and we're going to go search for wood, because I'm going to want mine to be a wooden door. And we're going to want to find a door that will fit in here, so we can right-click preview. And we'll see that fits in here, but we don't want to use that one. We want to find one that has load in the name. So that there or that there. And um, the reason we're using these load doors is the doors without load will open all the way. And if they open all the way, the player's going to see the void. So we want to use a load door so that it only opens a tiny amount. And this arrow, helpful arrow here, will tell us what direction the door is going to open. So this is going to open in toward the player. But if I put it in the other way, it's going to open out. 
but it's only going to open a tiny crack anyway, so a player will never actually see the void. So we're just going to do it like that. Save. And so there we have an interior, but we can put extra little touches on it if we want. So if I double click this, um, any of the individual references, and I scroll along to the extra tab, we'll see this thing called material swap. And if we click on that, you can see a whole list of materials. So if I want to make a nice clean pre-war looking room, I can select clean like that, and that looks like that. And if you wanted to do that for your whole room, you can control click on every individual reference in your room, like that, and hit the minus key, and we're going to bring up this batch action. And this has, has all kinds of useful uh, um, functions, because we can basically do any of the actions that you do when you click on an individual reference. But we can do them to loads of different things. So we can do link references, activate references, enable parents. But in this example, we're going to do a set material swap. And provided all of our um, objects have the same available material swaps, we can collect, select them from here. And I'm going to select BLT clean and hit do. And there we go. It's set them all to be nice and clean. And obviously, the more references you have selected, that might take a little, little longer for it to sort of process that you've done it. But that is that, we have an interior. And now decorating it, we can do that, um, do whatever we want basically. We can go into the statics and we can find, you know, tables, uh, modern domestic coffee table. That'll look nice. And I usually turn off uh, grid movement for this. And we can hold V to get, and uh, move the mouse to get a more precise zoom than the scroll wheel gives us. And we can position that right up against the wall like that, got a nice coffee table, uh, containers where the player can store their stuff, obviously that's all in containers, um, let's say a foot locker, um, just click and drag that in, it's just totally random basically, just for tutorial purposes most of the uh, things, and if you hit F with any object it'll drop down to the floor like that, and there we go, we've got a foot locker on a table, isn't that nice? Now, if we click, if we press the A key, like this, we'll see our interior falls into total darkness, and that's because this is what it looks like without any lights, and we're going to want to add some lights. So we're going to click light, and we've got a whole big section of lights. So you might want to have candle lights, so we've got all these candle lights like this, or we might want to just have an ordinary white light. You can also do cool lights, you can do warm lights. You could also do uh, spotlights to shine sort of light on individual things, and they'll appear as a cone rather than a bulb, which we'll see in a minute. But I'm just going to do an ordinary white light. And these have all got lots of different um, indicators after them. Most of the time, you want to look for one that has NS because that means it won't cast shadows. And if it does cast shadows, if you have too many shadow casting lights, it's going to cause a problem. And so if I click one that doesn't have NS, uh, oh, this hasn't, hasn't done it. Brilliant, that was a bad example. Um, if you click one that, if you click and drag one in that has shadows, it will um, ha it will appear, it may appear red, and that's just to let you know this is a shadow light. Probably default white light does it. Yeah, there we go. See, it appears red, and you can see this is casting shadows like this, and this can be quite intensive on your cell, so you possibly don't want to have loads of those. So we're just going to use default light NS. That's that will be fine for our purposes like this and click and drag that up to the ceiling or wherever you want it to be coming in from and if we hold alt s we can maybe is it control yeah control alt s like that we're making it brighter so we can make it so bright that the player will it will look horrible so we'll just make it a reasonable level of brightness i guess we can put more than one in if uh, you find that your light isn't quite stretching far enough we can also just straight up scale up the light like that just that's just holding S, not Control Alt S. We'll just straight up make the light bigger or smaller. Uh, so that looks basically fine. The lighting isn't my, yeah, I'm not great at it. Getting it to look normal is quite challenging. And so there we go, light and like that. Save. So now we're going to want to make the player actually be able to get inside the cell. So now we're going to want to think. Where do we want our cell to go? So perhaps you have an idea of a building you might want to use, like a vanilla building. You might want to transform into an interior, or maybe you've created a building somewhere. But I have not done any of those things. 
So I'm just going to place a door in Abernathy Farm. Okay, it has loaded. And, oh god, I'm just going to hit M to turn off these markers because that will, you know, lag the creation count if there's too many of them. So again, you've probably got somewhere in mind for your interior, but I don't have that. So I'm just going to look for a door. And again, make sure it's a load door like this. And I'm just going to double click it now. And this uh, reference thingy has come up. We're going to go to teleport and we're going to select teleport and look for the cell that we made earlier, which was called tutorial interior. And now there's only one door here in the whole cell, BLDP door wood load 01. But uh, if you've got lots of doors in your cell, it might not, you might not be able to tell which is which. So in that case, you can select a reference in the render window. So we can go to recent cells and we can reload our interior like this. And we can select reference in render window and just double click the door that we want. Alternatively, we could give our door a special name, a reference editor ID here, which would appear in the drop down menu and you could select it without having to travel back to the cell. But I'm just going to hit OK now, and I have markers off at the moment so the door marker won't appear. But when I press M, like this, we've now got this little yellow marker like sticking through the door. And this is where the player is going to appear when they come inside the cell. Rotate like that, and it's in a sensible position. And if I double click it now, we can view the door marker in Abernathy Farm. And you'll see here again we've got a, a sort of halfway through the door marker. So I'm just going to click and drag that like that and save. And that is it for creating your interior. In the future I have, have I'm possibly going to do, uh, I'll do nav mesh in a different tutorial because for reasons that uh, will be seen it requires me to quit out and come back into the creation kit. And so I don't want to be doing that in one tutorial. And I also want to have everything separate. So if everyone, anyone just wants to look up nav meshing, they can just look up nav meshing. And I'm going to do one on how to make lights a little bit better, how to use sort of light boxes to stop light spilling through walls. Um, I'm going to do one on optimization. So that'll involve creating room markers to make sure all your interior doesn't load at once and overload people's games. Uh, stuff like that. Then I'm possibly going to use this interior that I've created as... Um, a way into sort of designing sort of better quests, which is where I left off when I stopped doing tutorials, uh, probably about six months ago. So hopefully this was um, this will be a, a sort of a gateway to better things. I'm just easing myself back in. So hopefully this was you know all right. Uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.